His Majesty, the King's speech at the opening of the third session of the sixth legislative term praised the efforts of the executive authority headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and its significant development of government work mechanisms to provide the best services and fulfill Bahrain's aspirations. We have more in this report. <laughs> أن نثني على الجهود الدؤوبة لفريق العمل الحكومي بقيادة ولي عهدنا الأمين رئيس مجلس الوزراء صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة حفظه الله وبارك في مسعاه الذي يسجل بصماته المؤثرة في ميادين الخدمة العامة بانتهاج أفضل الممارسات الإدارية والتنظيمية ولضمان أجود الخدمات الحكومية. The March of Achievement, Progress and Civilization led by His Majesty the King in which the government under the leadership of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister is achieving great progress through plans, strategies and quality programs in support of the Kingdom's directions and aspirations in various fields. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's leadership of the Executive Authority has achieved the highest levels of efficiency and excellence through his continuous supervision and close follow-up of all areas of national work, which always seeks to achieve the aspirations of the Bahraini society in the social, practical, economic and many other fields, which confirms the government's keenness to develop its work. The development of government work under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister has become the main concern of all officials in the government, which has taken it upon itself to develop work mechanisms and raise productivity and the quality of services in constructive cooperation with the legislative authority, which in turn provides legislative support for all national efforts. This has earned local, regional and international praise for the continuous attention paid by the executive and legislative authorities to keep pace with all developments. During His Majesty the King's speech at the opening of the session of the sixth legislative term, His Majesty praised the recent sporting achievements of the people. We have more in this report. It's an important Bahraini forum and affirmation from an inspiring leader and praise for Bahraini sports achievements, especially in what the people of Bahrain have achieved recently. His Majesty the King's praise in his speech at the opening of the third session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils formed a motivation to make further sporting achievements for the Kingdom of Bahrain. Over the past few months, Bahrain has written its name in the history of sports achievements in golden letters after world champion His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa won the World Endurance Championship in France for the second consecutive time after winning the championship in the UAE. Shortly before that, the Kingdom of Bahrain made an important sporting achievement that made it among the list of countries that achieved many colored medals in the 2024 Paris Olympics. The Kingdom won four colored medals, including two gold, silver and bronze, for the first time since its first participation in the 1984 Olympics. This royal praise comes to confirm that Bahrainis, under the leadership of His Majesty the King, are marching steadily in the sports field with an upward trend that is filled with achievements year after year. And we're now joined by a professor of sports science at the University of Bahrain, Professor Dr. Faisal El Mulla. Welcome, Dr. Faisal. Can you tell us more about His Majesty the King's support to the sports sector? Uh, thank you for having me, in fact. With the regard to the uh, silver uh, 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 Jubilee celebrations, uh, the, the king, since he took the throne in 19, uh, 99 there is uh, enter the new era of uh, sport reforms and this is reflect the different aspects and different society in the sport sectors and this is what's uh, helped to uh, reform uh, different things on the administrative and the uh, technical and the, uh, legislative uh, uh, reform uh, if you don't mind, I will uh, uh, tell you one of the uh, shiny light on this 
yes. uh, what's happened and the reform. I will speak about four uh, perspectives. Let's start with the uh, infrastructure and development. Uh, during the period this uh, for two and a half decades, the sport uh, infrastructure is uh, going in the development in different way. In the particulars, the uh, building of the uh, Bahraini International Circuits in yes. 2004. In addition, building uh, a new uh, clubs, around uh, four to six clubs for the, uh, the clubs who emerge with together. This is in the, uh, as a very simple way of the info infrastructure. So, uh, second aspect in terms of the uh, uh, organizing and hosting the uh, mega event. Mm -hmm. Bahrain is uh, outstanding in the hosting and organizing for 20 years. It's uh, uh, Formula One uh, Grand Prix. And they are uh, successful in that. Uh, uh, this is uh, what's happened in the uh, corona pandemic. Bahrain is the only country in the world they give them, uh, they give them uh, the two times to organize in the uh, Formula One uh, Grand Prix. And uh, in addition to that, uh, Bahrain was uh, very uh, <coughs> successful <coughs> in hosting many uh, meetings and many tournaments, especially the Congress of the Asian Games. Uh, the fourth aspect, we are talking about the individual achievement. One of the outstanding individual achievement is the achievement of uh, his uh, uh, Highness uh, Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Nasser. Uh, he won the, uh, the last uh, uh, World Endurance uh, Championships in, mm -hmm. in France in 2024. In addition to that, uh, the Bahrain, for the first time, they won four medals in the last uh, Olympic Games in Paris also. They uh, won, as the, uh, as the report said, uh, two golds, one silver and one uh, uh, bronze. This has given the Bahraini a good position on the, on the sport world. The finally, it's the uh, achievement of the uh, team individual, uh, team uh, sport. Uh, all the uh, national teams, by the way, uh, our national team is going to play at the nine o'clock against yes. Saudi Arabia and Jeddah. Mm -hmm. Uh, all the uh, national team, they uh, have outstanding uh, results during this period of the two, two and a half decade. Uh, one of them is uh, the handball team is going to participate in the coming World Cup 2025 and for the sixth time in the row and for the mm -hmm. second time in the histories. This is a, a small light about what's going on during the yes. two and a half decade when the, uh, the His Majesty take the uh, ruler overall. Now, what's the future for the sports movement in Bahrain? What does the future hold? It's a good question. I think you agree with me. Uh, we are, as a Bahraini and as the athletes, we are uh, looking very great optimism of the uh, sport reform. Thanks to the support of the His Majesty's uh, King Hamad and the interest of the His Royal Highness, uh, the Prime, Prime Minister and Prince. Crown Prince, yeah. and the follow-up of uh, Sheikh uh, Nasser and uh, Sheikh uh, Khalid. This has given the Bahraini a very good position to attract any sport in the world. The coming things is very good for the for our for sport and for the athletes. You know that uh, the Bahraini is uh, planning to build a new uh, sports city in the Sikhir. This sports city is going to consist of a uh, stadium uh, uh, accommodate around uh, more than 50,000 uh, spectators and uh, it's also include the multi-purpose uh, arena mm -hmm. and uh, also is going to include the athletic tracks uh, in addition to the malls and so on. This is give uh, the Bahraini is shifting from the uh, amateurism to the professionalism and this is with the thanks of the his uh, uh, majesty the support, support yeah. and uh, uh, being involved as you know uh, his uh, majesty is the one of the player on the society he was uh, playing uh, a football at the beginning of his life i think uh, the uh, future is bright for us we need just be optimistic and we continue on that. 
especially with the, with the achievement of the individual and the team, as, a, as I said, hopefully this night against Saudi Arabia. Great. It all, lo all looks good. Anything you'd like to add before we end this talk? Uh, thank you for having me. Most hopefully welcome. I uh, uh, can wish all the best for the sport and uh, sport reform which is coming on the, in, in the way uh, within the direction of uh, uh, Sheikh Nasser and uh, Sheikh Khalid. Hopefully. Hopefully. All the best. Dr. Faisal Mullah, thank you so much for joining us. That was uh, Dr. Faisal Mullah, Professor of Sports Science at the University of Bahrain. A phone call was held between His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the President of the European Council, Charles Michel. His Royal Highness highlighted the steady growth of relations and cooperation between Bahrain and EU member states. Topics discussed included preparations for the first EU Gulf Cooperation Council Summit, as well as the latest regional and international developments. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority, President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the first men's team and the youth and junior teams on the occasion of qualifying for the 25 World Championship and the Cubs team for winning the Arab Cup. His Highness affirmed that the achievements of Bahrain's handball reflects the determination of the champions to reach the global level and are the result of the unlimited support of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister and His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He expressed pride in the achievements of these teams, stressing that this qualification is the result of the players' continuous efforts and the technical and administrative staff, noting the role of the Bahrain Handball Federation in in sponsoring the national teams. His Highness emphasized that the team's future goals in the World Cup require more efforts and perseverance, affirming his confidence in the ability of the players and the technical staff to showcase the best levels. His Highness expressed aspirations to see the teams continue their successes in upcoming tournaments.
Representatives Council Speaker Ahmed Al Musalam chair the Council's second regular session of the third regular session of the sixth legislative term. The session reviewed the government's letters regarding decree laws and draft laws, in addition to the notifications received on the consolidated final account of the state for the fiscal year ending on December 31st, 23, and the performance report of the implementation of the state general budget for fiscal year 23. The Council then approved the formation of a committee to prepare a draft response to the Royal Speech. The Minister of Education, Chairman of the High Organising Committee, Dr. Mohammed bin Mubarak Juma, announced the countdown to Bahrain's hosting of the ISF Gymnasia 24, scheduled from October 23rd to 31st, under the patronage of His Majesty the King. This announcement was made during a press conference attended by the Chairman of the Executive Committee, Ali Ishaqi, the CEO of the General Sports Authority, Dr. Abdurrahman Askar, and the CEO of the National Communications Center. Center Ahmed Khaled Al Arafi. The conference emphasized Bahrain's readiness to host this significant international school sports event. Dr. Jum'a highlighted Bahrain's capabilities in organizing major sporting events and expressed gratitude for the support from His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister, His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian works and youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of GSA and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Hani Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who play vital roles in promoting sports among youth. And for his part, Shaqi underscored the collaborative efforts among all committees to ensure thorough preparation for the tournament. He praised the progress made so far and stressed the importance of intensifying efforts to present a tournament that reflects Bahrain's reputation for excellence in organizing international sporting events. He confirmed that all preparations for this global event have been finalized. The first Deputy Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Abdel Nabi Salman, delivered a speech at the 149th General Assembly of the IPU in Geneva, titled Utilizing Science, Technology and Innovation for a More Peaceful, Sustainable, Just and Prosperous Future. Salman highlighted Bahrain's commitment to development and innovation led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister. He urged the Interparliamentary Union to adopt His Majesty's initiative for an international peace conference in the Middle East, which was endorsed by the 33rd Arab Summit in Bahrain. He expressed pride in the establishment of the King Hamad Prize for Peaceful Coexistence, aimed at promoting coexistence and tolerance, supporting human solidarity and ending conflicts. He said that the memorandum signed between the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence and the IPU to strengthen legislative frameworks aims to promote values of tolerance and peaceful coexistence. Bahrain's parliamentary division, represented by members of the Shura Council, Dr. Bassam Ismail Al Ben Mohammed and Dr. Mehdi Abdul Aziz Al Shwaikh, participated in the meeting of the Standing Committee on Democracy and Human Rights of the Interparliamentary Union during the IPU General Assembly in Geneva. During this meeting, the committee continued its discussions on a draft resolution titled The Impact of Artificial Intelligence on Democracy, Human Rights and the Rule of Law. The Bahraini delegation proposed several amendments to this draft, contributing to a total of 26 parliaments that submitted changes. Their suggestions included adding six new points to the preamble and five additions to the recommendations within the resolution. These amendments received praise from fellow parliamentarians and were adopted as part of the final draft resolution. Bahrain's parliamentary division, represented by member of the Shura Council member Hala Faiz and MP Hassan Ibrahim, highlighted the crucial role of legislative councils in formulating policies to improve health and protect individuals' rights to access health and reproductive services in a workshop organized by the IPU and the World Health Organization on Maternal, Newborn and Child Health. This was held as part of the work of the 149th General Assembly of the IPU and accompanying meetings in Switzerland. They highlighted the need for sufficient budget to support reproductive health programs as investing in this field brings economic and social benefits to the society. 
The Bahraini parliament aims to make a real change in citizens' lives to contribute to healthier and more prosperous societies. They called for increased transparency and efficiency in monitoring health policy implementation, collaborating with civil society institutions to raise awareness of the importance of these policies. Bahrain's parliamentary division, represented by a member of parliament, Hassan Ibrahim, participated in the meeting of the Standing Committee on UN Affairs as part of the IPU General Assembly in Geneva. The division affirmed that Bahrain's legislative authority plays an important role in reviewing international treaties with countries and organizations and work to enact legislation in line with them in order to promote development in all fields. Hassan Ibrahim stated that the parliament plays a crucial role in ensuring the entry into force of UN treaties by improving legislative frameworks, following up on implementation and strengthening international commitment, noting that parliaments can effectively contribute to achieving the objectives of treaties and ensuring the desired impact. The member of the Shura Council, member of the IPU's Committee on Promoting Respect for International Human Law, Dalal Jassam al Zayed, recently participated in an open session at the IPU General Assembly in Geneva. The session focused on the critical topic of armed conflict and special needs, strengthening parliamentary action to address the issue of special needs during armed conflict and its aftermath. She said that Bahrain is deeply committed to further promoting the human rights of people with special needs. She added that this commitment is driven by the unwavering support of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister. She underscored Bahrain's ongoing efforts to integrate respect for humanitarian law into its legislative framework, particularly concerning vulnerable populations affected by armed conflicts. Bahrain's parliamentary division, headed by the first deputy chairman of the Shura Council, Jamal Fakhrou, is participating in the Governing Council and the General Assembly of the IPU being held in Geneva in Switzerland. A number of speakers of parliaments delivered speeches on the Assembly's overall theme of utilizing science and technology for a more peaceful and sustainable future. Still with Bahrain's parliamentary division, led by the first deputy chairman of the Shura Council, Jamal Fakhrou, who participated in the 37th emergency conference of the Arab Parliamentary Union in Geneva. The conference focused on developments in the Arab region, particularly Palestine and Lebanon. The final statement emphasized the urgent need for an immediate and complete ceasefire in Palestinian territories, the release of all detainees and the safe return of civilians, along with effective humanitarian aid distribution. Arab parliaments called for increased global recognition of Palestine and support for its bid for full UN membership, advocating for an international peace conference. On Lebanon, the conference reiterated the importance of implementing Security Council Resolution 1701 to ensure Lebanon's territorial integrity and sovereignty, emphasizing respect for its borders and disarmament of armed groups within its territory. Bahrain's parliamentary division, represented by Shura Council members Dalal Zayed and Dr. Bassam Bel Ben Mohammed, and representatives Council member Dr. Mahdi Al Shweikh, participated in the meeting of the Inter Parliamentary Union Standing Committee on Democracy and Human Rights. The committee discussed a draft resolution on the impact of artificial intelligence on democracy, human rights, and the rule of law and the explanatory memorandum submitted by the project's rapporteurs. The parliamentary division submitted suggestions and amendments to the draft resolution, emphasizing the importance of addressing the gaps that may arise due to the progress of technology. Bahrain's parliamentary division participated in a panel discussion entitled Parliamentary Leadership in Disarmament, Preventing and Alleviating Human Suffering Caused by the Proliferation of Weapons. They affirm that members of parliaments around the world play a role in supporting partnerships and cooperation between countries and organizations and contribute to enhancing awareness of the importance of disarmament to achieve regional and international stability. 
The parliamentary division was represented at the panel discussion by the first deputy speaker of the representative council, deputy head of the parliamentary division delegation, Abel Nabi Salman, and Shura council member, Hala Fayez. Representatives Council member Hassan Ibrahim Hassan participated in the Young Parliamentarian Forum as part of the IPU General Assembly, where it discussed utilizing science, technology and innovation to achieve peace and sustainability from a youth perspective. He affirmed that His Majesty the King's support of the youth offers them promising opportunities to ensure the sustainability of youth contributions to nation building. He expressed pride in the efforts of the youth in Bahrain and their influential role in the development of various fields, especially in technology and modern techniques, praising the initiatives and plans implemented by the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister to motivate the youth to innovate. The Secretary General of the Shura Council, Karima Mohamed Al Abbasi, participated in the Assembly of Secretaries General of National Parliaments at the IPU General Assembly in Geneva. Al Abbasi emphasized the General Secretary's commitment to enhancing community partnerships and implementing initiatives to sustain communication with citizens. She said that this effort aims to further bolster legislative awareness and promote parliamentary culture. She highlighted the significance of raising awareness about the Shura Council's vital roles and noted the ongoing efforts to engage civil society, including school and university students, in attending Shura Council sessions. Under the theme Enhancing Asset Management Capabilities for a Sustainable Future, Bahrain continues to organize the seventh edition of the MedCon 24 conference, which is organized by leading local, regional and international oil and industrial companies. We have more in this report. More than 80 international companies showcased the latest technologies and innovation in the fields of maintenance and reliability, and the latest industrial developments at the 7th edition of the Maintenance and Reliability Conference and Exhibition, MaintCon 2024, providing an opportunity to review solutions and products supporting the maintenance and asset management sectors. It is well organized. Um, we really impressed by how uh, Bahrain um, uh, hosting uh, a really important um, event such as uh, MentCon, which will uh, establish more business uh, leads uh, from all over the world. It would um, enhance our business relations, it will increase our opportunities as a sales and marketing. Uh, we've uh, been open up to the all uh, companies from all over the world. The organization of the event with the participation of regional and international companies is in line with policies aimed at supporting and developing these important areas in the oil sector, as this international conference and its exhibition represents a platform to discuss the latest technologies and the most important practices in establishing the culture of maintenance in its various stages, in addition to exchanging information, experiences and studies. Yeah, we thank uh, Bahrain Kingdom for uh, receiving us. In this event, we've been participating a lot in MaintCon previously and this year as well. Uh, it's, it's been always a pleasure to provide our best solution, best services uh, to the industry of oil and gas, petrochemical, power and mining. Uh, and we, we feel that we are into the uh, uh, direction of all national oil companies like Babco, like Saudi Aramco, like all the NOCs in, in, in GCC to promote the um, uh, the, uh, the net zero emissions, uh, uh, you know, solutions. Uh, we have within our company, we are an American company, but based in, 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 in GCC. Uh, we feel that we, with this event, it would help us to network with our uh, clients directly and provide them our best practices to, uh, in fact, enhance the operation, the business continuity of our customers. MaintCom 2024 is one of the important specialized events hosted by Bahrain since its formation in 2010, as it is today the leading platform for knowledge exchange and discussion of best practices and advanced solutions in the maintenance sector at the local, regional, and international levels. 
The Ministry of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture announced that the registration for the 12th edition of the Bahraini Farmers Market has now opened. Applicants can register until the end of October. The Bahraini Farmers Market is a significant event for local agricultural production and diversity. The market, in partnership with the National Initiative for Agricultural Development and STC Bahrain, attracts farmers, agricultural companies, nurseries, date shops, bee yards, entrepreneurs, and families offering local transformational products related to agricultural production. The event, which will be held every Saturday starting next month, will feature a new package of programs and activities. Interested parties can register via the electronic form on the Ministry's website www.mun.gov.bh or through their Instagram account at mun underscore bn. The General Directorate of Marine Resources at the Executive Authority of the Supreme Council for the Environment announced the lifting of the ban imposed on fishing kingfish in Bahrain's territorial waters, along with removing the restrictions on their sale in public areas, effective today. This follows the end of the fishing ban imposed on August 15th during the fish breeding season. The directorate said that the ban was part of Bahrain's efforts to protect marine resources in line with the regulations on fishing, exploitation and protection of marine resources. It also follows the decisions of the GCC Agricultural Corporation Committee at its 23rd meeting, which include measures to protect kingfish. The ban aimed to increase fish stocks by regulating fishing activities during the breeding season, preventing overfishing and ensuring balance within marine ecosystems. The directorate commended the Fishermen's Corporation and sense of responsibility during the ban, reflecting a national partnership aimed at protecting and sustaining fish resources.